Hello everyone and welcome back to the Elise Easy Show. Welcome back to Podmas. I'm your host, Elise Easy, and today I'm joined by Vangelina Scarf. How are you sick of me yet? Hi. <laughs> I know, we are like proper rinsing and milking this. I love it. It's I'm having fun. fun. I'm having a it's good time. Fresh. It's not really Christmas themed, this content, you know? We'll make it the next ones more Christmas themed. Like 10 Christmas hypothetical scenarios. Yeah, what would you do if you were Santa Claus for the day? <laughs> That's so childish, though. That's the first Christmas thing I could think. What kind of adult Christmas things? Oh, what if you had to fuck Santa? Like, what What do you want me to ask? <laughs> you can't do that. Like, Mrs. Santa would be very happy. Mrs. Maybe she would. Mrs. Claus. Maybe <laughs> she's a cut. Maybe they're swingers. They feel yeah, like swingers. I mean, they give off that kind of energy. Right? Yeah. So if you're immortal, you would get bored sooner or later, wouldn't you? Well, they are like they are fairies, right? I don't Santa know Claus. about that. Well, they're like immortal beings that have magic powers that come into your home and as a thank you, you're supposed to leave them food and milk. Hmm. So they're fairies. And fairies are, well, at least in the books that I read, they're always f***ing each other. So... <laughs> Really? Well, I've been reading a lot of, like, smut. It's not, I don't like it. I'm not a fan, to be honest. Are you not a fan of reading smut? Well, see, the book that I think I complained to you about this before, I was reading A Court of Thorn and Roses, but mm. I didn't realise it was, like, a spicy book. I thought it was just pure fantasy. And then you get into it, and she's like, us talking about this sexy beast man, and I'm like, I really hate this. And she uses the words like, sh- like sheathed himself at me, and I'm like, Hurr. I hate it's, this horribleness. Isn't it? Um... Oh my, Beauty and the Beast. It, it's yes. in a court of th- right. Well, I assume so. I never checked, but like, it feels very obvious when Is you read it. It. It's just my personal interest. Is it crap? Because I've seen people complain about it because I have a big list of like crap books to get through and I did see some people complain about it on Reddit. Not that I'm trying to go into things in bad faith, but obviously mm-hmm. it's much easier for me to do content if the thing is crap and we all know it. Is it bad? Yeah, can I give a slightly spoilery answer? Yeah, I don't like, care. Yeah, people skip ahead like a couple of seconds. It It starts off kind of strong and they mm. set off like this strong character and then the middle bit happens and like nothing happens in like act two of the book Mm. nothing it's all about like it starts off kind of like you know high stakes like fantasy and like her world and all of that then nothing happens she's falling in love she falls in love and her entire personality disappears like completely Mm. and then for the rest of the book everything is just about how much she loves this dude and it's really it's it's quite shit i was angry that i was reading it you know, I was not having a good time. So I'd say you'd have a lot to talk about. Is it toxic? Oh, like, yeah. It's... Oh, okay, yeah, good. Yeah. Fine. Completely. Love that then. Good. Because that's just like endless concept for me. I love I love when I'm doing a book review and I'm like, you know, in the scripting stage and I'm reading something. I read like it, like if I read House of Night and they mm-hmm. say something really offensive, like at first I'm a bit like, oh, oh, that's awful. Taking it back. And then I'm immediately like rubbing my hands together. Like, yes, this is content for me. Thank you. No, there's so much in this book. Okay, good, like good, endless. Good, good. You'll love it. It's going to be great. <laughs> okay, fab. I'm going to add that to the list. Right. For, for today's episode, we are going to look at 10 weird would you rather questions that AI came up with. I am excited and also terrified. <laughs> I wonder if these are tame. I mean, I, I gave a cursory look through, but I didn't I didn't vet anything before doing this. I just copy and paste it into a document. But that's what you do with it. <laughs> of course. So, would you rather have a third eye or a third arm? Uh, where is the eye? I thought, I immediately thought third eye are what this one here, pineal gland, that type of thing. That was my immediate thought. But no, it might just be it might just literally be a third eye that's on yeah. your chin or something. Yeah, I think they mean physically, like a third eye, not like some spiritual thing. I oh. feel like I'd go with the arm because the eye feels like just an extra thing that could get injured. 
And then also the arm, if it really gets in the way, you could get it amputated. Mm. Or if it's not getting in the way, it might be kind of useful. Like you could be really good at piano or something. So the arm. Yeah, because I feel like if you had a third eye, what if, so imagine the eye was on like the, like your back. How would that then look? How the hell would that look? What would, like, what would your vision become? Because obviously both of my eyes are looking at you, but if there's another eye and it's in my back, what suddenly happens to my actual vision that I'm seeing from? How does my brain organize it? Do, 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 do I see the back? Like, you know, does, does, my, does yeah. my vision divide? And then like, this is the back and then this <laughs> Split is the front? screen vision. <laughs> or can I see the front? simultaneously at the same time as seeing the back and I have 360 vision and that would be horrifying don't you think that'd be awful yeah I'd freak out we need to consult a biologist like who deals with like weird insects and shit like what do mm. they see would that make would you an that. angel a biblically accurate angel yeah which is yes. like one eye <laughs> why not <laughs> do you know one of my best friends she's a good she's a good Christian girl so I love terrorizing her with the biblically accurate angel thing because <laughs> she's like they don't look like that, and I'm like, oh yes, they do. And I saw someone, someone on TikTok painted like the biblically accurate, and I was like, I'm so gonna get you this for Christmas. And she was like, I'm just gonna save you the money right now because if you get that for me, it's going in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a nice friend. <laughs> I am. I'm just like, you know, I'm just lovely. I think third arm would be good, but if it was like on you know where your tailbone's meant to be imagine mm -hmm. your third arm is there so then you have like a kind of like impromptu tail wouldn't that be good i was thinking you could use it as a chair but why do you want a tail i just think it'd be interesting it's an icebreaker something to bring up at parties elise is a furry confirmed <laughs> <laughs> oh no this is like my pyrocynical moment do you remember when that happened? Do you even know who Paris You know Paris He's was, surely. Charlie, right? He's that dude. No, that's critical. Oh, no. Then no. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Because yeah. it's a whole thing that I won't get into. Just Google Paris and fairies later. Uh, <laughs> still, still love him, though. Um, yeah, third arm for sure. It's the right choice. Right? Yeah. Yeah. A, a third eye would just, I, it wouldn't make sense inside your head, inside your vision. Um, You'd probably go crazy. It'll be annoying. I don't need to see what's behind me. You should always go forward. And if your third eye was on your back and then you have to wash your hair and you get shampoo in it. Well, I'm sure you can still close it. <laughs> don't with your logic. You don't know that. That was one of the <laughs> parameters. It didn't say eyelid. So you just have like an eye that's always open and gets soaked yeah. in it all the time. It's disgusting. It'll be really dry. Oh. No, I hate, no. I, I don't like this. I told you that these are I did <laughs> I did ask specifically for weird ones. Okay. So I told you these are gonna be horrible. I'm sure they'll be fine. <laughs> Would you rather talk to animals or plants? Animals, because I don't want to have to stop eating plants because I'll die. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. I was just thinking of grass and trees and I was thinking who who <laughs> Uh, who would want to talk to a tree? Well, I don't know why he's talking to a tree. Not to I would negate... love to talk to a tree. I would love to talk yeah, to a tree. Yeah, but over animals. You mm. live with animals. Do you know what I mean? Would it be so much oh. easier if you could communicate with your cats? They're... Mm, no. <laughs> you're thinking, you're thinking, oh no, they're they're mean or something. But imagine you're wrong and that's just like that's that's a cultural kind of difference that you've like you've interpreted it the wrong way like what if no, the cats I'll are actually really what. nice what no if, like, i don't they're think they're gonna be you? mean i'm thinking they're gonna wake me up at every hour of the night going food 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 now food <laughs> but don't <laughs> they do that anyway but just meowing yeah but i don't hear it oh, oh. <laughs> i'm a really heavy sleeper when i actually sleep mm. Hmm. No, but like <laughs> animals is the clear answer for sure. I don't know. I think it would make me quite sad. If uh, the option was talk to animals or talk to trees, I'm going to pick trees. But if it's all plants, then it has to be the animals. Because then like imagine you're trying to make dinner and your broccoli is talking to you and you'd be like, I'm so sorry. You'd don't start eating meat. That. 
that the broccoli's already dead. Don't worry, because it's already cut off in it. It's already. But dead. then you've talked to like the living plants, and also like I grow vegetables on my balcony. <laughs> They'll be like, please, no, don't, <laughs> don't pull me from the roots. I'll be like that film. I didn't see it, but I saw a clip of it. Uh, what's it called? Sausage Party. That Seth I've Rogen heard made. Of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and the food is alive, and then there's a bit where the food is getting eaten, and it's all screaming, and it's like the baby cat, like the baby cat, baby carrots are being eaten, but they're actual babies. <laughs> that's horrifying. <laughs> Your scenario is about. just that. My scenario is just I don't really because like if if I could talk to the pl- if I could talk to grass, I can't stand on the grass anymore because it's just really rude. But imagine the option was just talking to trees, right? Because they're so fucking old. They're so like wise. I think trees are very wise in general. I love trees. Like I always try and just like I don't hug them, but I do go. But I'm like, it's a nice tree, and uh, these trees feel nice. You know. I'm going to ruin your illusion right now. <laughs> okay, yeah, like they're old. You've got like a four hundred year old tree. Well, mm-hmm. maybe it's also got the like cultural standards from 400 years ago so maybe all trees are boomers and they're all actually like really racist or something imagine like they're really offensive so you're just li- you're having to listen to like a boomer tree talk about like the the saplings that are coming over here and taking the old trees like like areas and it's just saying like the most xenophobic just like awful shit <laughs> i don't think trees are racist <laughs> you don't I- know that I obviously I don't because I can't talk to them, but I always feel like trees are just like these wise, beautiful beings that are like they wouldn't be affected by human cultural bullshit because we are stupid, but trees aren't stupid. They're wise. Nature is metal. Nature is hardcore. What if they're like serial killer trees? The only reason they don't kill you is they can't is because they can't move. Because nature is like messed up. You know, you get those um those those parasites that like infect infect snails brains and make snails climb up trees and the snail gets eaten by a bird and then the bird shits out the parasite and then it all starts again you know nature's like that like there are ants that turn other ants into zombies Mm -hmm. a whole thing you know so like your your beloved trees are just like that no my trees are lovely I'm not accepting this tree slander. First you come for the moon, and now the trees. <laughs> this is starting to feel personal. Do you know where I'm getting this from? There's a um, there's like a meme of um the oldest like, the oldest living turtle. It's the mm-hmm. life day, and it, it's basically like this. this it's, it's this meme where the, where the turtles kind of saying like a, it's not actually saying the turtles saying like you know. I am one of the last of my kind. I'm like the oldest. You know, I've been around for like a hundred plus years. And then it says something along the lines of something to do with Hitler. Because do you know what I mean? Because it's like that old. It's just mm-hmm. this racist old turtle. That's what I'm Thank getting you from. for clarifying that the turtle didn't racist. actually say that. <laughs> racist tur- <laughs> Wait, racist turtle explain. <clears throat> no. Explained. Like, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. That's different. There's a turtle that keeps like attacking shoes or something. I'm not on about that. I'm on about the turtle that has like is a Hitler supporter. Why has it always come to Hitler? I don't know. It just seems to be the topic. It's either that or robbing banks. I will find it, but it's definitely a thing that I have definitely seen. I'm not making this up. Um, no, yeah, talking to animals, hundred percent. I just feel like it would just be so much. It, it it'd be so much easier. Mm-hmm. Life would be easier if I could talk to animals. I'd be, and it's just me talking to the animals, and I'd be a bro to the animals <laughs> and. I would have like a flock of a murder of crows who would do my bidding, you know, because like, you know, like ravens and crows, you can kind of sort of, you can befriend them, you know, mm. uh, and they hold grudges and they remember faces really well and stuff. But if you leave food out for them, they remember you and they, they might leave like shiny little things in return. You can They're have like that. They're such cute babies. Yeah. Like almost symbiotic relationship with them, like at a very minor level. Mm. Be like that. But just mass. But do you know what? Talking to animals, it'd be very depressing to go to a zoo. Yeah. Yeah. But I try not to, like, recently, I don't go to zoos anymore. Me neither. Unless it's like, I found one that's more like, um, I think it was last year when we were in the Canaries. Uh, it was like a rescue mm. center for, like, endangered animals that had been, like, 
not trafficked. What's the word for what when you do with animals? That kind of thing. Poached and stuff. Right? Poached, it's yeah, poaching yeah. when you kill them. Yeah. So they've mm-hmm. been like rescued from there and they were just there for like rehabilitation and stuff. So that was quite nice. They had those um, I was about to say cannibalistic birds. Carnivore birds. <laughs> not cannibalistic. And they're really good terrifying. I've never been so scared of an animal in my life. It's eyes are like the eyes of a killer. I don't want to talk to that bird. <laughs> so I would not go there. I would like to go to, I don't know, somewhere where they've got loads of penguins and then I could talk to the penguins and convince the penguins to just like come with me, follow follow me out of there. And mm-hmm. then I can live my dream of just hanging out with loads of penguins. I didn't know that was a dream of yours, but I support it. Oh, one of my like, Okay, so I've got a few goals in life. Number one, be on Ancient <laughs> Aliens. Mm-hmm. Number two, be the person that interviews an alien. Number three, have a mansion where I have a swimming pool and like a little indoor ice rink and then having loads of penguins. And, you know, because people, but people will say, oh, but Big Elise Yeezy, th- isn't that mean? Because, you know, you're taking away the penguins from their natural habitat. They don't like being in the cold. Have you not seen, like, the, have you not seen the clips of them in Antarctica or wherever the hell they live? And they're all like in the snowstorms, they're all huddling together and they um they they'll take turns being in the middle of the huddle to keep like the warmth going oh. and keep us there. So people like people, penguins aren't like freezing stuff on the outside. They they don't like being there. If they liked being in, in the cold snow, they wouldn't be huddling for warmth. They don't I'm doing them a favour. They can come live in England. It's still a bit cold here, but not as bad as Antarctica. They can live in my swimming pool, which would be massive, like Olympic sized. Isn't this the plot of a Jim Carrey movie? Mr. Pop is Penguin. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, gonna be you. I want to be like a real life, like a Mrs. Popper. I love penguins. <laughs> penguins are like my favorite animals. I love them. That's adorable. Because <laughs> they're just they're just like so silly, you know. They just they just like slide around on their bellies. I like that. I like that yeah. about them. I didn't realize they were so big. And now that I know this, I'm yeah. kind of freaked out. I thought they were this size. Oh, sorry, you can't see my bottom hand. This size. Mm. Like, what is this? Like 12 inches tall? Mm. I, they're not. I'm scared. <laughs> I think <laughs> like doesn't work. years ago, I don't know when, but probably like when dinosaurs were knocking around, penguins were like the size of humans or something like that. I love that. I think that's awesome. Uh, I don't like it. I like it when animals are human size because I just find it interesting because I just think like, oh, imagine if they were old enough that they could talk to us. Like, have you seen kangaroos? They're tall, they're huge, and they're absolutely stacked. They're all like, they're all like bouncing Joe Rogan. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> imagine, <laughs> imagine if they were, they were evolved enough to be able to speak to us. I mean, they would obviously be like gym bros, like for sure. Yeah. But wouldn't that be interesting? Wouldn't that be quite, that'd be something, right? I feel like they'd be dickheads. Yeah, but it'd still be interesting. It'd be like, what would you rather talk to, a human gym bro or a kangaroo? Okay, fair. Yeah. Yeah, no, I see your point. <laughs> Give them fun. podcasts. Because <laughs> we just like, oh, they would. Alpha male <laughs> toxic kangaroos. <laughs> but the thing is, is like kangaroos are actually hard. You know, mm-hmm. like, like you wouldn't want to... I mean, Australians, I see videos of Australians punching kangaroos all the time, which like, you know, as a vegan, part of me is like, oh, should I be like Peter? And should I be like, oh, that's mean. But like, no, kangaroos will mess you up, right? Why are they punching kangaroos? Not for fun. I should rephrase that. It's <laughs> like, because kangaroos will, um, uh, there's been like a few TikToks of kangaroos uh, and like someone's punched them so they let go of their dog. Because kangaroos will try to, if they're like in rivers or bodies of water, they will try to apparently drown other creatures yeah they're like yeah so like there there are lots of there are quite a few tiktoks of like a kangaroo who's got like a dog and it's kind of like laser what's the word lacerating you know causing lacerations yeah lacerating Mm -hmm. like the dog's neck with their claws there because they're so they're so hardcore and then the australians like just whack them they just punch them at that point yeah fair what the fuck i did not know this about kangaroos why are yeah. they trying to drown things? Like, that feels calculated at that point. Exactly. They're just, like, kind of arseholes, but I would still want to talk to one because it would be more interesting than talking to a human arsehole. You know what I mean? Fair, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should we move on? Yeah. Would you rather eat a live spider or a dead rat? 
I don't like either of these options. This AI as well, like it's oh. not me. Is is the rat diseased? Um, I don't. I think rats carry diseases regardless. Do they? Maybe. What kind of spider? It's oh, like a like house a... spider. Nah, go for like a big one, like a like a hunter's or like a huntsman, whatever it's called, the Australian, the camel spider. You know, just the big cough ones. Mm. I don't like it. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with the rat. Because the, if the spider is that big, it's going to try and climb back up my throat. Yes. I thought but, that too. I would have to. I'd have to go for the rat. Because could you imagine, like, you know? Because what's the process? You first you have to like grab the live spider, which no thank yeah. you. And then you have to. And then what if it bites you? And they're all hairy and stuff. But a rat, you know, well, I have a kinship to rats. You know. Yeah, the spider, like, if it's poisonous, it's probably gonna bite your neck on the way down, yeah, and then yeah, you're dead. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the dead, the dead rats, it, it, it's already dead. Maybe I could cook it a little bit, you know, because I don't know, like they, it wasn't specific. Like you had to raw dog the dead rat, eat it raw. But I still feel like you <laughs> could do that over eating a spider that's live. Yeah, no, I feel like that would be better. I, I would rather do neither of those things. But mm-hmm. yeah, the rat, the rat. Mm-mm. <sighs> would you rather have your dreams broadcasted on tv or your thoughts broadcasted on the radio just like (laughs) (laughs) short-circuited oh no i have such awful like dreams and when like some of them are fine right they're like regular boring dreams or like you're just doing the regular thing or you're like a celebrity or you're like it's a horror thing a nightmare (laughs) horror dream (laughs) but like some of them are really and embarrassing mm-hmm. but then my thoughts oh I have so many of them mm-hmm. no it'd have to be my dreams because then at least I have the excuse of like it's my dreams I can't control them you know mm-hmm. my thoughts if I'm thinking oh this person's a boring fucking cow like and that's on oh yeah the dreams yeah plus like you know intrusive thoughts or when your thoughts wander or your thoughts are being like spontaneous whatever like that is just so chaotic but then mm-hmm. with dreams i mean my dreams are always really interesting and they're always <laughs> quite long and there's always like there's just a lot because like, sometimes i text you don't i with like the weird yeah. stuff that happens in my dreams and i feel like people would maybe enjoy watching them as well so i wouldn't be too worried about the embarrassing aspect because like my most of my dreams are quite um you know they're they're very interesting like they're interesting for me but <laughs> you know what though you you said to me once because we were just i don't know if we were doing this on a podcast or i don't know if we were just chatting but we were Mm. talking about um we were talking about dreams and you said um about you know the parallel worlds multiverse theory which has since been in like that dr strange marvel film right oh is it yeah um it's in the second dr strange he realizes that dreams are just you watching like one of your you know lives in all the parallel universes and stuff right mm-hmm. um but we were talking about this before and you said to me um something like well but when you get too lucid or too aware that you're in a dream and people react negatively to you you know when they say things like you shouldn't be here or just and i was like oh but i've never had that i've never had like the you shouldn't be here thing but i get people getting angry at me and they like chase me and try to like scream at me and you're like yeah but that's that as well since like mm-hmm. we had that conversation, something about it like creeps me out. And now yeah. I swear, like I've had more dreams where that kind of you shouldn't be here thing happens. It's because I genuinely think it's because you're aware of it now. And the thing is, yeah. as soon as you start bringing it up, my back starts to go. I'm like, I yeah. feel really <laughs> uncomfortable. No, but it, it, it's like a lot of people said they had, and I know people can lie. Right. I am aware that people are capable of lying, (laughs) but a lot of people said they had this and I've had similar things as well. It's Mm -hmm. like you can't you're not supposed to acknowledge that you're dreaming Mm -hmm. because as soon as they know that, you know, you're fucking screwed like it's it's done. It's over and it gets really scary. So I don't know. But I told you, like, I've had dreams where they're like going on about like, oh, yeah, the testing, the testing. 
and mm-hmm. stuff. And then I had that dream where I was like so convinced. Should I say this or do I sound mental? <laughs> Go ahead. We all, we're all, we all sound a bit bonkers on here. It's fine. The dream where like I'm convinced that like I spoke to some kind of like otherworldly being of what, some kind. Alien? Yeah, that or like some kind of interdimensional thing. And she was saying like, no, this is like, uh, what is it? There's two levels after this one. Mm. Like, but not about the dream, about like life. Life. Yeah. (laughs) So it's stuff like that. She seemed to be fine with me knowing it was a dream though. What'd she look like? (laughs) It's really hard to remember, but definitely blonde and looked like a person. Ah. So it wasn't like an alien looking alien. Mm. Uh, I had a dream. I had a dream recently, and this one actually really concerned me. Um, because I have like, I think it's because I used to take lots of naps as a teenager or whatever. But I have like a really weird hold over my own dreams. Like I can go as soon as I realize I'm lucid. That's it. It's game over. You know, I mm-hmm. can. I've got really good control of my dreams. It's quite weird. And if I start having a nightmare or like a bad dream, I can wake myself up. Oh. Um. I could wake myself up either by just like opening my it sounds weird but you just have to think open your eyes and you'll kind of like false open your eyes a few times and then eventually you will start to open your real eyes like or you kill yourself in the dream I've done that a few times <laughs> to get out of zombie dreams like jumped off the of tall buildings like whatever you know anyway I was having this dream oh I remember what it was about now it was horrible it was about it was about like the death of someone close and I was like there's no way this is real this has got to be a dream I'm gonna wake myself up and it wasn't working so I was doing other things to try to wake myself up and it wasn't work. like for the first time and I was repeatedly and it was a really long dream as well and it was really mm-hmm. concerning me you know because I was like maybe this is real and I'm just like stuck here and this is my life eventually I did manage to wake myself up maybe like I jumped off a building or something but it was like it was horrible it was really horrible because like someone had died quite violently who was close to me and it was it was awful it felt awful you know can i ask a question so like yes if you have like i'm pretty sure you've talked about this online like if you have like dissociative stuff yeah are you not concerned that if you have some kind of traumatic thing happen in your life and you're dissociating very heavily to the point that it feels like a dream that you might not act out this sequence of trying to get out of the dream in real life. No, because there's there there are ways to tell. So like the like some of the ways to become lucid is you have to be aware that you're dreaming, and there are certain tells in your dreams that help you become aware. Where you go, oh, like it, like if you if you visualize and look at a clock on the wall, mm-hmm. look away, look back. The time is never the same. Also, reading stuff in your dreams, it's always, like, unintelligible. You can't mm-hmm. read it. You can't... I, I can't even write properly. Or when I write in a dream, it, it's not what I'm thinking. Um, or the classic, like, pinching yourself. Or just, like, looking at your hands. That seems to help. So there's loads of ways that you can tell that you actually are dreaming. I don't think, like, it would ever be... I, I, think, like, I, I don't think of that at all. I do think... If something really traumatic happened to me, I'd probably start drinking again. Like I do, like realistically, I do think that like that is much more of a concern. You know, mm-hmm. there have been a there, there's been like at least one time in the last few years where like something like, like you know, a death happened, and I was like, oh, all I want to do is smoke and drink beer, and like mm-hmm. I had to really, you know. So mm-hmm. I think I'm just like that's more of my concern than. Oh no, I'm gonna disassociate and jump in front of Like, you know what I mean? I'm more concerned yeah. about like and that's more on the forefront, the stay and sober thing. Well, the disassociation stuff, um, I still get it, but it's very rare. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh I had it I had it the other day because my coffee was too strong. So it just sent oh. me on a bit and I was like, because that used to happen. I had to work myself up to like being able to drink coffee normally again, and I can only have like one a day, but um, I'd made my coffee like way too strong and I was disassociating and I knew what it was but I was able to just go along with it because I knew that I'll feel fine in a few hours you know that like it's kind mm-hmm. of like old hat you know you're used to it after yeah. certain and also I don't I don't get it nearly as much as I used to I'm mm-hmm. not sure why that is I used to get it really bad when I wasn't sober 
you know mm-hmm. like anytime I was hungover I would 100% have a panic attack and I would like disassociate and it would just be like hellish um mm-hmm. so you know th- that's not too much of a concern basically <laughs> too long didn't listen that's not a concern no I did it's, it makes sense yeah, yeah. I think I just asked because like for me I don't know if it's like fully a dissociating thing or it's also attributed because I have such trouble sleeping but like a lot of the time I can't tell if I'm awake or not and then also like I have a lot of memories like even like right now there are things I'm like I really truly don't know if that happened or that was a dream like I I really can't tell so (laughs) I I get a bit of that but not with not with dreaming but like did I just make this up (laughs) you just decided I mean it's potentially yeah (laughs) you did it's funny though because like very like very specifically with stuff to do with aliens and UFOs there's so much I know but I'm convinced that I've just made half of it up so when I had Nick Pope on one of the things I kept saying was I'm not sure if this is true I might have just made this up but then he was verifying based almost everything that I said you know so it's like I have more knowledgeable than you think you are (laughs) I gaslight myself I go no you've literally just made this up be quiet and it's like no (laughs) I read all of the time. Like I am actually incredibly big brained. I'm basically a genius. Um, <laughs> but I gaslight myself into thinking, no, I'm just stupid. And I'm just inventing stuff. <laughs> like you're in an abusive relationship with yourself. Oh, 100%. Yeah. It, um, it's great. I'm going to get a restraining order against myself very soon. <laughs> I'm glad we've somehow turned Would You Rather into therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do one last one and try not to therapize. Would you rather, okay. this is a weird one, would you rather be able to fly, but only when naked, or be invisible, but only when fully clothed? I don't understand, like, does that mean you're invisible, but your clothes aren't, so then it's like the invisible man, but you're wearing clothes? Oh, okay. No, I, I, I don't get it. Like, I think I that's, yeah, because when you were saying that, I was like, well, obviously be fully clothed and, and invisible. invisible. But like, that yeah, I think it means your clothes that. are invisible. Hmm. Well, at that point, that's kind of useless. Like, when, what are you going to do with that? So yeah, it has to be the totally flying redundant. naked. And you just you just get over it. Like, th- I think people are going to be more concerned with there's somebody flying than, oh, Jesus, she's naked. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, do you think that'd be really uncomfortable? Like, Because imagine, well, how fast can you fly? You know, because I feel like that's important. Because if you're slowly flying, then... Oh, no. No, right. I'm trying to think of this logically. Maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe that's where I'm going wrong. Because, like, gravity is still a thing. And if you're flying naked and you're a girl and you're, uh-huh. like, you're like flying like this, so you're kind of, like, horizontal, and your boobs are hanging, would your boobs get saggier quicker? See, I, I don't mean? have boobs, so I'm oh. fine. <laughs> so this is why I'm, like, yeah, easy answer. Also, like, that would hurt though like if you're around your period like it's bad enough trying Ooh. to go for a jog on your period when you're a pender <laughs> but imagine like you're trying to fly oh but no oh, okay no because you just have <laughs> i thought of something really rogue then imagine you're trying to fly if you're on your period but you would just put a tab on it i'm just <laughs> yeah. sorry i'm gross i'm gross i know i'm a writer i had to think of these like, it was scenarios. my first thought as well <laughs> to be honest. thank you um yeah imagine like you're flying and like everything's just like flopping about well, you can pick and choose when. And also, like, nobody said you have to fly high in the sky or whatever. Like, you can you can probably uh, pick your own speed. <laughs> uh, like, your, your own altitude, right? But yeah. then if you're low down, everyone's going to see you. If you're high up, it's just UFOs and airplanes that are going to see well, you. That's why, well, you. I feel like it would be quite dangerous to fly that high up, which is why I'm saying you just get over it. Like, everybody's going to see you naked and... It's fine. Like everybody's seen Vanessa Hudgens naked and she's okay. You know. Would well, you reckon if you could fly, do you reckon like it, it would count as a physical activity? Yeah. Like like definitely. running. It would or be like swimming. Yeah. There'd be resistance. Okay. So then you'd be maybe, really nice maybe for your you'd, back. Maybe you'd just get like quite toned. Do you know yeah, what I you'd mean? be like, so like really hot and naked flying in the sky. I wouldn't, I wouldn't care. Do you know what I mean? If I was like nice and toned, <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, no lumps or anything anyway. If I looked like fit, then I wouldn't actually care about being seen naked. I don't, I wouldn't care. I'd be like, I'd be like, do you know what? Good for them. They can have a little show. 
I think I'd just get like a couple more tattoos just to distract from everything. That's a good idea. You could like tattoo underwear onto yourself. I am absolutely not <laughs> doing that. That sounds hideously painful. Okay, Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, 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 sure. That would hurt. But like, that would be one way of getting around it though, surely. Well, um, I don't know how much I can respond to that without going into like anatomy and be, but like, it's not like it's going to fully cover everything. You'd have then to if, just like if, be really hairy. But then like, but then if you're quite high up and say like you've got like almost all of your butt toed, but like you don't need to get your actual, you know, your, your mm-hmm. actual bit. You don't need I don't that. think you can get that tattooed. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, you don't need like all of it tattooed, right? Then like you, you don't need to go in inside your butt cheeks, right? Yeah. But then if you're like, if you're like, high enough it would be kind of like blurry anyway like the tattoos would blur right so you're basically Mm -hmm. kind of covered up do you know what i mean like when you see someone from far away yeah i still feel like i'm not tattooing on the underwear okay i'm i'm just going with it like it just is what it is they'll live they'll get everybody's gonna get used to it at some point they're gonna be like oh there she goes again (laughs) we've all seen it before (laughs) literally literally skin to the wind that's what people would be saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is that your answer as well then? The flying? Yes, because if you're invisible but when wearing clothes, that is that's it's stupid. So, it's so useless unless you're like like unless you're in a Zoom pre- call. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're pretending. Unless you're oh wait, fully clothed. I, no, that's useless. I, I was just trying to think of a way to make it less useless, but no, that's if completely you, useless. I don't know if they needed somebody to model just clothes, like without the person. Or if maybe job. if you needed to hide from someone mm-hmm. and you had like a pile of clothes on the floor, and then you kind of like went inside it, <laughs> like like it would like it would just look like you're part of the clothes then. But that's the only. That's the only way. That's I can a very think that specific a circumstance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no other way that there's any use to that like superpower. <laughs> that's stupid. Yeah. So no, <laughs> no, I agree with being able to fly, but only when naked, and just getting <laughs> over it, giving people a show. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something, but it's actually like really outrageous. That I don't. Think oh, I please should. do. Please say it. <laughs> It's kind of like, no. Yeah. Did I say it? Yeah. Kind of like, you know, if, if I looked really fit and I was flying around <laughs> naked, I wouldn't care. In the same way that, you know how the boomers are always like, you should never, ever, you should never, ever take pictures of yourself, right? Mm-hmm. You should never, yeah. ever do that. Because what if they get leaked? And if they get leaked, it's your fault. You know, like boomers love that kind of logic because they love to victim blame, right? When it's mm-hmm. when it's kind of like, well, okay, well, if your house get but gets burgled, don't complain. Why do you have a house in the first place? You know what I mean? It don't it don't work, right? If a picture of me from like six or seven years ago got leaked, where I'm topless and that got leaked, I don't think I would care because like I looked great. <laughs> You know what I mean. So I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not gonna cry over that. I just be like, do you know what? Enjoy everyone. I don't care. <laughs> I ain't fussed if people if people have seen my boobs. I mean, I would be annoyed because now OnlyFans is a thing. So it's like, you know, if it got leaked, if like a, a picture of that sort got leaked, um annoying that I wouldn't be able to make any money from it. Well just but... leak it yourself preemptively and make them money. Like, do it. <laughs> well <laughs> I'm not gonna leak them myself because I don't do that anymore because I'm not crazy and in my early 20s but mm-hmm. do, you, do you know what i mean like i made sure that if i took like any like suggestive <laughs> pictures or anything like that that i look good i made sure i made sure that those angles were angling you know so like <laughs> i wouldn't care the same way that if i was really fit and had to fly around naked i'd be like mm-hmm, wouldn't care <laughs> well that's the thing you could just if you could fly but you had to be naked you would just go to the gym for a bit before you start flying yes no, I agree. I think this is great, actually. I want to be able to do this now. <laughs> I'm not sure my boyfriend would agree, but still. Listen, 
it's practical. You can get a lot of places very fast. It's good for him too. What if you need to go to Tesco? It's like half an hour away from where you are. Mm. But then I'd have to go into the shop. Okay, so what if like, would rather be able to fly but only when naked? Would I be able to carry a backpack with me that had some clothes that I could change quickly into? Because that's what they do in Twilight. That's what the wolves do. They tie like they somehow tie their like, you know, trousers to their their paws somehow. <laughs> would I be able to do like similar? Have a little backpack. I feel like that counts as clothes. It's a backpack though. It's an accessory. Ah, not... <sighs> well, if it was a plastic bag, sorry, a bag for life. <laughs> <laughs> what other bag for lives are available what if it was that you know would that count because because if you can't carry things whilst having the superpower isn't that a bit annoying too because what if you want to do you know what i mean that's that's a bit maybe you could fly to japan no i feel like this is a loophole and i'm going to work it i can have a backpack and it has like <laughs> just some underwear in so i can just go into the shop just in your underwear you wouldn't bring like a t-shirt or anything or well, if i looked really hot then who cares <laughs> Fair. You know what? Fair. <laughs> I support you. That is the end of our Would You Rathers. That is the end of this episode. What do you think? What do you think of them? They are weird, aren't they? AI is thinking some strange things. I'm a bit concerned for our future. I feel like we could make it weirder. I think yeah. It, yeah, I think we can make it weirder. But like let us know your answers. I'm gonna do this for all of them now. <laughs> In the comments, everybody, your answers to these. Thank you. We should do one where we do, where we do invent our own, but we're going to have to like, for that, we would have to actually prep for these properly and write mm-hmm. things down in notes and just like, that's a bit beyond me at the moment. We can do it though. Be fun. No, I'm saying, I think we can make AI weirder. I think I, I can oh. prompt it, get some weirder ones. Oh, you do that then and you mm-hmm. can bring them to the next one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I'm really good at prompting ChatGPT. It's like a skill, a very really? useless skill. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be a good skill for when they are the overlord, though. Well, at that point, I feel like it's not going to work the same. So you just say please. They'll remember that you used to say please. And I, I always think say be please gracious. to all of the Dude. AI. I've been doing it since before this level of AI came out, just like with the Google Home stuff. I'm like, can you play this song, please? So I've been very polite. <laughs> Me too. And hopefully that will save us in the future. Thank you all so much for listening. This is part of Podmas, so make sure that you follow on Spotify so then you can get more of these straight into your ears tomorrow uh, and continuing on until Christmas Day. I think we'll do a little Christmas special, you know, for the people that, like, maybe don't care about seeing their families and maybe are just, like, chilling by themselves. We'll do a little, like, Christmas special for them, I think, but I need to organise that. Anyway, (laughs) thank you all so much for watching and listening. Like, comment, subscribe. See you all next time. Bye. Bye.